custom NASA seats. Why does that why does that matter? It just matters because it's awesome. <laughs> you see those little lines going out? Check. That's their emergency egress. It's like a zip line. This one here has been upgraded to lift 18 million pounds. No. One of the most rewarding aspects of RV travel is being able to use your RV for a front row seat to some of the best events you can imagine. <laughs> you just made a ladder out of a tree with an ax and now you're gonna go cut it down? You're amazing. We've been fortunate enough to use our RV to attend music festivals such as Merle Fest, air shows like Air Venture and Oshkosh, and of course, the Balloon Fiesta in Albuquerque. It's a fan favorite for most RVers. I would say it's a 100% must do, absolutely yeah. gorgeous. And to make things even better, we get to see these events while traveling with our own things, including Charlie, and not even pack a suitcase. But one event we haven't seen yet, and it just might be at the top of our list, is a NASA launch from the Space Coast of Florida at the Kennedy Space Center. Go NASA, go SpaceX. We were lucky enough to be invited by NASA to share the SpaceX Crew-6 launch experience. Oh my Whoa. God, you gotta, you gotta go. This is the sixth crewed operational NASA commercial flight with the mission to transport four crew members to the International Space Station to swap places and bring back MS-22, a Russian crew of three astronauts, and then spend six months at the International Space Station to gather new information and complete experiments that will bring us closer to our goal of landing on Mars. But first, we need to rendezvous with the other social attendees and make some introductions. Everyone did around and did introductions, which I'm glad because there's some mm -hmm. really interesting people here. The like, ham radio gentlemen. Yeah, so right like here. right here. Hi. Oh yeah, we, we need How to talk you? to you. Yeah, yeah sure. Well, I mean, it doesn't have to be right now. Well, whatever you want. Hi, but, I'm Jim. Jim. But Jim I'm runs Jim. A, a ham Jim. radio. I, so I'm part of the amateur radio on the International Space Station group. We're a nonprofit group sponsored by the space agencies and the amateur radio societies around the world. Uh -huh. And we make contacts between astronauts on the space station and kids in schools via amateur radio. That is the coolest Isn't that awesome? thing so, ever. So, so you probably know as an RVer, there is a lot of people that RV and ham radio is their they hobby. Your it's their, it's their oh. hobby in a hobby. N4BFR. Is my call sign mm -hmm. and uh, you'll find us and uh, we're going to be posting about the launch we're already started discussion how to hams how do astronaut hams get licensed well the same way as everybody else how do schools get get uh, into the queue to be able to talk to astronauts those kind of things so all that information is on our social you are getting a backstage glimpse into nasa and the first stop is the vap building that is the Vehicle Assembly Building, if our bags check out. As you can tell from this wall, the VAB has been a collective effort, originally called the Vertical Assembly Building, because this is where large pre-manufactured rockets, such as the Saturn V, were stacked, vertically. It's also where the Space Shuttle was assembled, and now the SLS for the Artemis Project looking at the world's most powerful rocket and Orion spacecraft live on launch pad 39B. During this tour, we had the opportunity to hear from Janet Petro, the director of NASA's Kennedy Space Center, to learn more about the second and third missions of Artemis. Our, of course, Artemis 3 is uh, when the um, crew will actually be descending down to the surface of the moon, so that'll be the, that'll be the that real exciting. Right What's up? When's that scheduled? Um, so two, we don't have any Artemis launches this year. Two will be next year towards the end of the year. Um, you know, probably like November, December is my guess. And then the, a year after that, 2025 will be uh, Artemis 3. And that, you know, that flight's heavily dependent on our SpaceX uh, partner uh, developing the human lander system. First time ever that NASA has awarded a commercial company um, to develop and build and design and we buy a service for them for getting our astronauts to and from the surface of the moon So that's super exciting. So they're doing their HLS um, You've probably been following some of their starship operations Successful static fire. So hopefully they'll be uh, doing their first uh, suborbital flight uh, And then of course Artemis 3 will be bringing up our astronauts in Orion Matching up and bringing them down 2025 is when we're shooting for Once these giant spacecraft are assembled, how do they move them to the launch pad? 
NASA's solution was designed and built in 1965 to move Saturn V to the historic launch, Complex 39. Okay, so what we're standing in front of here is crawler number two. Number one is on the other side of the building over there. They were both built identically back in the 1960s. They were built for the Apollo program. They were built to lift 12 million pounds and they were built by a company that built mining equipment and it was originally, mining equipment is last 10-15 uh, years. So the fact that this is now 58 years old, it's lived through the Apollo program, it's lived through all 135 flights of the shuttle program, Skylab, and we've now had the first Artemis mission on it. Um, it's an incredible piece of machinery. The two were originally built from the same set of drawings. At the end of the shuttle program, they knew the SLS program and the Artemis missions would become heavier, so we had to upgrade this so it could lift more weight. And at the time, the, the administrations and the government didn't have the funding for us to do both, so we chose one, and one of them has been upgraded. So this one here has been upgraded to lift 18 million pounds, so that's 50% capacity increase from that to this. Original engines which make us roll, propel, are called ALCOs. It stands for American Locomotive Company. It's exactly what you would have seen in a locomotive in the 1960s. Wow. Now, we still use them because even though they're now 58 years old, they only have about 2,500 miles on them. Yeah, so I, I will tell people it's kind of like a Prius. So we use diesel engines, they turn generators to create electricity. We create AC and DC electricity. We propel ourselves with DC electricity and then the AC is used to power our lights, our computer systems, our control systems, and then we give power to that big thing over there, the mobile launcher, which it in turn powers all of their air conditionings, all of their equipment, and then when there's a, when uh, SLS is sitting on top of that, we power that too. Great, how are you? Oh, thanks. Is it plan your day? Yes, there's what a full schedule. Okay. The only thing that I've gotten a little tip on is that the IMAX theater is phenomenal. So there's a showing at one, which is in a half an hour. Okay. So um, let's try to get to that. Okay. I don't know where it is. This we'll looks like out. a huge campus. Now let's talk about planning your trip to the Kennedy Space Center. It's located on the space coast of Florida, about an hour east of Orlando. There are several campgrounds to choose from, and if you work for NASA or are active or retired military, you can stay at the CARS campground just 15 minutes away. Another popular destination is Jetty Park Campground, with a great view of the launches. We stayed at the Kennedy Space Center KOA about 30 minutes from NASA. For ELKS members, there's also a great ELKS Lodge with five water and electric sites for just 25 a night. If you're venturing without your RV, consider the Courtyard Marriott and visit the rooftop space bar for fun drinks and fantastic views. The view! The view is fantastic. You can see all of like all of NASA's buildings, right? It's right on the water. Yeah. And um, they have a little space themed all over the place. Astronauts downstairs and there's a lot to see at the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex. A top attraction is the Space Shuttle Atlantis, where you can see the shuttle up close and hear from an astronaut. You can also go behind the gates to tour the property and see Saturn V in full scale. If you're traveling with kids, there's plenty to do and see from rides, the IMAX theater, education, and even a rocket garden. Okay, so if you like NASA, you like space, and you like documentaries, and you like theme parks, and you like museums, there's a lot going on in there. Those that have been following KWD for a while know where I stand on theme parks and museums. But nonetheless, I do think that there's a lot of people that uh, would enjoy it immensely, especially if you have kids, because lots of colors, very well done. Uh, a bit expensive, so like Trish said, maybe you could find uh, a day that there's discounts or something going on like that. Of course, the main attraction to visiting Kennedy Space Center is seeing a launch. And lately, they've been averaging about one per week, so your chances are good. But the launch you're about to see includes crew, which makes it extra special. Are you ready? I'm ready. Launch, but not for like seven hours. <laughs> <laughs> and here they come, Crew 6, taking their first steps outside before their journey to space. From left to right, we have Andre Fedyev, Woody Hoberg, Stephen Bowen, Sultan Al-Nayani. 
Now they'll stand in front of their family and loved ones. Three Teslas on the way to the pad. What are you gonna have? Okay, here's the deal. We got two hours and 37 minutes left. We gotta hit that charcuterie board, babe. <laughs> I hope we are. And we're running out of time. We have cheese and meats, a variety of such to get through, so. <laughs> I don't know how we're gonna yeah. fit it all in. That's my concern. <laughs> I'm getting concerned. I mean, you know. Right. I know. Houston, we have a problem. Tonight, though, we count down to 1.45 a.m. and uh, I believe three seconds. Start to see Steve and Woody going across the crew access arm there. And that's a neat shot, courtesy of our crew in the helicopter. And here comes Woody and Steve down the crew access arm, ready to get inside the Dragon spacecraft. We got your good read. Oh, what is this? What is this? Look at this. Are you joking me? Here we go. We got some crew six charcuterie. That's right. We're not messing around here. No, we're not. We got two hours to kill. <laughs> as you just heard there, that final go for launch as well as for propellant load coming from the launch director or LD. So all good news there. We are still go for space tonight. Uh, as of right now, the crew access arm is being prepared to be moved out of the way. Uh, so the crew is strapped in. Their helmets are locked in. The fuel is going in. It's like cloudy around because the nitrogen, I'm not gonna pretend to know exactly what's happening. It's foggy. It's a fog machine, okay. Did they add the dry ice? They added the dry ice. But here's the thing. It's not just like a cool event. It's like a historic event. It's so cool to be yeah. here. Yeah. Even when we saw the um, astronauts come out of the building. It was like, oh, I mean, like, I got so excited. <laughs> and now we are literally like almost 10 minutes away from them taking off. What do you think it's going to feel like? For them? No, for you. <laughs> well, I imagine first it's just going to be exciting because you're going to hear the noise, you're going to see the light, but then the sound is going to like come toward us. We're going to feel it. So um, I'm pretty excited for like a whole sensory experience. I don't know what to expect. Um, I've seen TikToks of the whole sky being lit up. I don't know if I'll like how much I will be able to hear it. <laughs> Um, how loud it will be, but I am so excited. Okay. So what's the time? I'm the time? infinity. You got a um, blanket now? Where did the blanket come from? Oh yeah, I stole it. <laughs> okay, so um, we're at like nine minutes. We're at nine minutes. We gotta go. Now T minus ten minutes. Correct. SpaceX confirm crew displays are configured for launch. There's that call out indicating that those pre valves have been opened, and now there's a little bit of that super chilled liquid oxygen flowing through the hardware. Uh, basically chilling it out uh, on prior to liftoff. 30 the seconds. The LD on countdown one. Hold, hold, hold. We are standing down due to do a T-tab ground issue. As you just heard, we have a hold tonight uh, due to the T-tab issue that I mentioned prior and the... Dragon SpaceX with that call from LD. You are go to step into 5.100 launch scrub. 5.100 one That's in work. Scrub. It's like you don't even believe it. I'm going through like the seven phases. I'm in denial right now. Wow. I just... It can't be. But I mean, uh, it's the reason that they have these checks and balances is to keep issue. them safe. And so, and the so there's spark, sparks with the oxidizer. Start that doesn't sound good to me. You know what the only thing worse than staying up till three in the morning is? Staying up till three in the morning, two nights in a row. Oh, 
so big. All right, take two. How are you feeling? Take two. Well, there's a little less, you know, like anxiety level, like what's gonna happen? Yeah. Um, but it's still just as fun. Mm -hmm. And I'm watching. You're watching the live? Yes, I'm watching the live. I love it when they hand, hand it over to these ladies. They're so good at what they do. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, so are you ready? Uh, well, I'll t answer Caleb, are you ready? Let me check. Okay, so we're back here for take two. And when we first arrived to NASA, we went to Facebook and we said, hey, what questions do you have? And Patricia asked a great question. And she said, what is the emotional toll of the astronaut and the crew when there are delays like what we just experienced? And just recently, we got to participate in a briefing and I asked that exact question to astronaut and former director of the Space Center, Bob Cabana. We know going into it that there's a very good chance we're not gonna go. Right now, so there's a, a program management board meeting today, program control board looking at closing out all the issues. We're gonna have a, a launch readiness review that SpaceX runs tonight at eight o'clock. It'll probably go three or four hours. Scrubs are a fact of life. And uh, if you go, it's great. And if you don't, you know, you got a positive attitude and you go back and, and do it again. Back by popular demand. Thanks for coming back. Yeah, glad to be back, Daryl, and hope the second time is the, is the charm. How's it going? Are, they, are we on time? Are we gonna? Is this thing going? Is this We're thing almost happening? under an hour. Almost under an hour. Okay. The team has moved out of the white room. Mm. They have closed the door. Sure. All the seal checks have been done okay. on the suits, in the pod, on the seal. And now okay. they just need to move everything and out of the How about the, the check engine light? Did that go away? Did the check engine light turn <laughs> off? Is it like a Jeep? It's not That's a what Jeep. I do. I gotta <laughs> keep driving. Okay, hey, kind of real quick. Uh, as if the launch isn't exciting enough. We actually have a surprise. Caleb's idea for what's gonna happen after the launch. Mind so blowing. after this after this goes up in the sky and we go, ooh, we go on, oh, I'm sure it's gonna be amazing. Um, we're gonna launch something else. We're gonna launch something else. It's pretty cool, so stay tuned. <laughs> Once again, on behalf of the entire SpaceX team, we're honored to have you aboard Dragon Capsule Endeavor on its next trip to the International Space Station. We wish you a great mission, good luck, Godspeed, and enjoy the ride. Uh, thanks again to everyone out there who made the vehicle, the ISS, our mission, and our crew ready for launch. Really want to Thank everyone. Appreciate the uh, great call. Much appreciated call for the scrub the other night. Uh, it was a great uh, call and a good learning opportunity for the crew and I think for the teams. And uh, so, once more to the breach, dear friends, Crew 6 is ready to launch. This is phenomenal. We're under nine minutes. If everything goes to plan, we are going to see these guys rocket into space. This is going to be the sixth crew that has ridden in the Magic Dragon <laughs> <laughs> to outer space. They're going to go into orbit and within 24, 25 hours, they're going to be at the ISS, the International Space Station. And the coolest part is it's like, this is like the Olympics for space. All the countries are coming together, working together, and um, they're going to meet up with the current astronauts that are there and they're going to brief them. They're going to all be together for a little while before those three fly home and these four stay behind. Dragon is in countdown. T minus one minute and counting. Dragon is in countdown. Oh, you guys, we're at 44 seconds. This is so This is okay, way cooler to... than the ball drop. I gotta be honest with you. Dragon, okay. SpaceX, go for launch. SpaceX, Dragon, copy, go for launch. T minus 30 seconds. T minus 30 seconds and counting. All teams pulled, go. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Engines full power and lift off. Oh, whoa! You gotta, you gotta go. Oh, wow.
alarms are going off. Our alarms are going off. I can feel it in my chest. Yes, you can feel it in your chest. There are humans in outer space. When will that be like a plane flight? I might Just have like, a permanent spot in my vision <laughs> from looking at what is pretty much like looking at the sun. What? Two alpha. Copy, two Stage alpha. separation confirmed. There you can see on your screen confirmation of stage separation okay. as well as ignition of that second stage engine. Second stage is now carrying the Crew-6 astronauts to orbit. Yeah, SpaceX Dragon, I just want to say as a rookie flyer, that was one heck of a ride. Thank you. But I would say put it is an absolute miracle of engineering, and I just feel so lucky that I get to fly on this amazing machine. Thanks to SpaceX, thanks to NASA, commercial crew program, and our international partners. Um, a lot of innovation went into this, tireless work effort, and a lot of pain, painstaking attention to detail and focus on testing. And I think that's what makes it all possible to fly humans in space. Thank you. Okay, that was awesome. But we need a debrief, and I have just the place to do it. Yeah. Awesome. Now that we're at the Waffle House, any final thoughts on the launch? I just find it completely phenomenal that four astronauts went into space. <laughs> I mean, we could get technical, <laughs> but I don't think we have to. It's out of this world. So cool. Good one, Mom. <laughs> so cool. So fun. I, I just, I'm amazed. I'm completely amazed. It is, it is a pretty cool experience. Two rocket shoots them off. They won't even get there for 24 hours. They're not even called astronauts at this point. They're like some kind of engineer. Yeah, and the other thing that's cool is like within a minute and a half of it launching, the Falcon 9 went back on the barge and landed. And apparently they've landed like 170 times already, successfully. It's it's crazy. It's, it, it's it, And when the thing's going up in the air, it's just, oh, it's just rumbling through your whole body. And, Anyway, it was fun. So thanks NASA for the invitation to come out here and record that. Fun to share. Thanks Caleb for the recommendation to come to Waffle House. And um, that's it. I mean, check. We, we have checked the box. I don't think we're done until you hear from Caleb about how his Waffle House. Well, is and you know what? Here's the thing. We're our, we're going on. These guys, these four astronauts, are going to be up in space for six months. Six months. I'm, okay. I mean, I'm sorry, but are they? Are they making eggs and hash browns at the same time? Right. Five, four, three. All right. Hello. Thank you for joining me tonight. Okay. I thought that'd be better. <laughs> <laughs> this we'll looks find like out. a huge campus. Bring your water. Bring your sunscreen. Bring your hat. Let's hide, go. Hide your kids. Hide your wife. Hide your wife. Hide your husband too. Because they're giving tours to everybody out here. <laughs> When we went to Avatar at Disney, uh -huh. Dad looked over and he goes, you're closing your eyes. Why are you closing your eyes? That's my natural go-to move on any roller coaster. What did it mean? I'm thinking this could be my outfit for lunch. Oh. Gosh, it's so be great. Almost, I mean, a little tight in the waist, maybe. And it's the kids. I, yeah. I just need like one size up. Thank you. You're welcome. I just need you to sign if you want. I just found out what game they play. What? Oh, okay. Yeah. When astronauts go into space, they always do a few things, little rituals, right? One of them is they always play a game of cards. You know what it is? What? Euchre. No way. No way. Yes, he just said that, he said, I would bet money on it that it's Euchre. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he goes, I think, what is that, Bunko? He says, no, it's a different name, it's weird. I said, is it Euchre? He says, yes, it's Euchre. <laughs> hey, astronauts. <laughs> I need to charge this battery, because while they're worried about 
math equations that I can't even pronounce. <laughs> My main concern is making sure I don't run out of batteries. <laughs> you want to be able to record the event. Which I'm sure, I'm sure they don't want to run out of batteries either. No. You don't want to get halfway to the space station and be like, ah, 10% low. Anybody want some fun extracurricular activities, look up the resumes of these guys. Yeah, if you want to feel terrible about your life, all your decisions, <laughs> and everything you've accomplished up to this point, read what they've done. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my gosh, there's an alligator. Stop. Are you kidding? You hear that? Oh <laughs> my god. Whoa, look! Okay, wait. Okay, here, wait. The rocket launch is like in second stage. Second it's awesome, stage. and there's a gator hissing over there. I mean, is this, could this not be more Florida? <laughs>